Good evening, everyone. I am Lauren Gates. Gates, I'm your host of this evening's Airway Health Solutions Conversations. I am so excited because we are with two Mayo Masters, Brittany Sierra and Carice Laguerre, and we have a special guest, Dr. Ben Moralia. So Dr. Moralia had to join us because this is why we all came together, is because you can't have airway without Maya, right? So um, thank you so much, Brittany and Carice, for joining us. Ben, it's always great to have you as our special guest. You are always a guest on our show. But um, Brittany, why don't you tell us a little bit about your background, and then Carice will tell, go into a little bit about your background. We have so much interest tonight in myofunctional therapy. What is it? How can I integrate this into my practice? What do I have to do to become a myofunctional therapist? So we have a lot to talk about. So, But let's first get to know each other a little bit. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your backgrounds? Awesome. Um, so I'm Brittany. Nice to see. Well, I can't see you guys, but you can see me. Um, a little bit about me. I'm a registered dental hygienist for 10 years. I do not practice clinical hygiene anymore. Um, I've been a myofunctional therapist for five years now. Um, I took my first course. Well, what, 2016 that was. Um, I have a private practice in Connecticut in my hometown. I see patients, you know, locally and throughout the United States. Um, I also have a podcast, if any of you wanna listen, we wanna get that awareness you know, out there. Lauren, Ben, and Carice have all been on my podcast. So awesome, and you should all listen to their episodes. Um, so yeah, we're super excited to do this. You know, I was so excited to get you know, hooked up with Dr. Moralia and, and Lauren, and then Carice as well. We had taken a, a myofunctional therapy class I don't even know when that was now, 2017, maybe Carice and I met. And then in over the last year, um, I had the privilege of meeting Lauren and Dr. Moralia. And it's so important that the two go together. And so often I feel like I get asked by some hygienists who, um, you know, either maybe already took a malfunctional therapy course and they'll reach out to me and say, but I really want to get into airway. And I'm like, but Mayo is airway. You're already in airway. It, it's all, you know, it, it all goes back to, to each other. Um, so we're so excited to have you all here and to really be able to offer myofunctional therapy, you know, in your current practices to go side by side with the amazing techniques that Dr. Moralia teaches. Um, so we're just happy to be here. Great. And we're happy to have you here. Uh, Carice, tell us a little bit about your background, how you got started. All right, thank you. Um, I think Brittany did a wonderful uh, intro, so it's hard to follow that, but you know, I'll try my best. Anyway, <laughs> I'm also a registered dental hygienist. Uh, I've been doing Mayo for a little over four years. I've been like into it and taking courses pretty much for five by, by now, but practicing actively for about four years or so. Um, I have my own practice, the Mayo Spot, and we are international. I see clients from all over and I have one referral from India that I get a lot from um, so I do practice internationally I don't want to limit myself to Jersey even though I'm a Jersey girl through and through and I'm trying to build a little bit of something uh, in other parts of the country but just to get back on track um, I'm super excited about this I've been working with Brittany for a little while now and we've been definitely helping other people because I've, I've been there and done it it's like everything built in practice and also built my own practice. So I kind of know how this goes and how to do this successfully in many different areas. So I'm super thrilled to be here and talking about this tonight. I, it's such a passionate topic for my, for my interest. So. Well, welcome both of you. And there's no better time really to implement myofunctional therapy into the dental practice. I mean, the timing is ripe. There's so much interest. I get so many emails and uh, DMs a day from patients asking me where they can find the myofunctional therapist, where they can find an airway dentist. You know, we can, by becoming a myofunctional therapist and integrating it into your course, you can provide more access to care. You can generate a new revenue stream for existing patients. And then you draw new patients that are now looking for airway and myofunctional therapists. But Dr. Moralia, you always say in every mini residency that we've had in every talk that I've heard you talk that myofunctional therapy, it's not optional. It's a critical component to care. Can you tell us a little bit about why you feel that way? Yes. And thank you. Thank you both Brittany and, and Carice for joining us tonight. This is amazing. And probably one of the most important things that you could do for any child through adult, because the, the muscle work is important at any age, but when it comes to our airway mini residency that Lauren was mentioning, 
<clears throat> all of that is built on the foundation of treating the cause. And so if we're focused on the soft tissue dysfunction, and we have appliances and or techniques that can help you know, to, to do expansion orthopedics and orthodontics, the growth and development component. Ultimately, if you're addressing the cause and you're focused on that soft tissue dysfunction, then the real treatment of the cause is to do the myofunctional therapy. And so you know, every single patient we meet that we diagnose under development for has then a pathway through myofunctional therapy because most of the kids that we see are underdeveloped. And then of course they, they grow up into adults who are underdeveloped. And then with all of that muscle dysfunction comes symptoms early, but they also graduate to late. So no child outgrows these symptoms and no adult just becomes healthy on their own. So the need is really across any age group that you could think of. And when we see under development, while we have expanders and we have guidance appliances and we have phrenectomies and things like that, those are techniques, you need the myofunctional therapy. So um, one of the things I'm convinced of now, this, it's been a very long time treating children and adults in this space. And I'm, this is my 17th year. If I was asked to pick one thing only, if you, if you could only choose one thing to treat a patient with, what would it be? And I would say it would be the myofunctional therapy. I would say, throw everything out. If you had to choose one item, go with the myofunctional therapy because I would rather have all of the muscle balance and function in place because it's supportive of the breathing. It's supportive of the posture. It's supportive of redirecting a human being to healthy. So if my hands were tied and I, and I was told you could only choose one treatment option, I would put myofunctional therapy first and go with that because you could make the biggest difference in a human being. It's nice that that doesn't get forced on anybody. We'd like to do it all. The biggest results come when you combine it all. So with the collaborative care and having myofunctional therapy as a significant part of the growth and development techniques that the dental practices have, boy, does that make a winning combination. So I got to stop talking because you guys really have the goods tonight. But thank you for joining us and appreciate you. Yeah, and thank you for that insight. So I'm getting a lot of questions from experienced myofunctional therapists tonight to doctors and hygienists who don't even, even know what myofunctional therapy is. So why don't we start with the basics? And perhaps, Brittany, you can start with telling us, you know, what is myofunctional therapy? I know James Nestor had you on as a guest. I was so happy to see you on James Nestor's uh, program that that was basically his question too, is first of all, what is it? And then we'll dive into the benefits of it by sharing some of your cases. That would be awesome. And then Carice, we'll get into the business side of it with you. Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to actually start sharing my screen right now. Uh, let's see. Are you guys able to see my screen? Start yep. my slideshow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Oh, my toolbar is blocking it. Hold on, guys. I'm having technical difficulties. There we go. Ah! It is Brittany. There he is. Yeah, no, I'm here. I, you know, I we just can see the screen. It's okay. We just see the, the thumbnails as well, but you can go ahead. We can get Okay. The yeah, I don't know why it will, will not share. So I apologize. Um, so I want to start by saying the history, talking about the history of myofunctional therapy, oral facial myofunctional therapy, oral facial myology, whichever way you want to call it. I like to call it oral facial myofunctional therapy. Um, because everybody thinks a lot of times when patients call us, especially that this is a new therapy, or even a lot of doctors out there think that this is a new pair, uh, new therapy. And it's not, I mean, it dates back to the early 1900s. I mean, as early as I believe it was 1907 with um, Dr. Edward Engel, who is the father of modern orthodontics, who spoke about the impacts that, you know, mouth breathing can have on occlusion. Um, then it goes to, you know, Dr. Alfred Rogers, who talked about basically facial muscles being living orthodontic appliances. And he actually started to develop exercises. So it dates back in the literature. It's been around for as literally as long as the early 1900s. So I, I don't think a lot of people know that until they dive into myofunctional therapy. Um, and then, you know, what is myofunctional therapy? It's the neuromuscular um, re-education of the oral facial muscles um, and the oral facial complex. And no matter what patient we're working with, we always have main goals in mind. Um, I really wish I could get this to share guys. So I apologize, but- it's okay, it looks just fine. 
Okay. So what are the goals? We want to make sure that we establish dominant nasal breathing all day and all night. So we can't just, you know, all day long be nasal breathing, but then we go to sleep and that jaw drops and we're starting to mouth breathe. We need to have that dominant nasal breathing pattern. We want to attain that competent lip seal all day and all night. We want to create a, pal a palatal tongue rest position all day and all night. That's the tip of the tongue resting up on that alveolar ridge and the middle and back of the tongue lightly suctioned up there as well. We want to develop bilateral alternating mastication. It's really important. A lot of people, when they come to see us and we start talking about, you know, diet and how they eat, their people look at you like you have four heads, like how, why does this matter? You know, and that's why education is so important. And patient education is so important for a myofunctional therapist to be able to provide no matter the age of the patient. I mean, even if you're working with a five-year-old, you want to be able to make sure that that five-year-old understands why you're doing that exercise. You're obviously going to present it differently than you would to an adult patient, but education is so critical on all ends. Um, we want to optimize those swallowing patterns and make sure that we get that back teeth together swallow. And if we have, you know, our noxious oral habits, we need to make sure that we eliminate those prior to beginning any kind of myofunctional therapy program. Um, like Dr. Moralia said, you, you really can't have one without the other. I mean, they, they go together, structure and function, form follows function. Um, you know, your, your, your dentist, the office that you work in, if they're going to be doing these amazing, um, expansive techniques, but the function's not there, well, what's going to happen to that structure? Why did it get there to begin with? Right. It was that muscle function that Dr. Morelli just spoke about. Um, some of the case studies, actually the first case study that I'm going to go over was my very, very first myofunctional therapy patient I ever treated. And when I first started, I didn't get into myofunctional therapy because I was working in an office that was very, you know, airway centric or anything like that. It was, I read about it and I knew I had to do it. So I, I just went and did it. Um, so I didn't really have that network of providers that I have now. So looking at this case, I'm going to show you guys, and I'm still super proud of it. You know, it was, like I said, my first myofunctional therapy case, but what the case would have been if Dr. Morali was able to treat it would have been amazing. <laughs> and Dr. Moralia, I just want to say that every myofunctional therapist listening to this right now is like praying to have a Dr. Morali around with that statement that you just made about, um, you know, if you had to choose one thing, what would you choose first? Um, because too often, I think until a provider really, really understands the whole picture, they don't understand the importance of myo and they don't understand, you know, that they're not going to get optimal, optimal development without having that supporting function behind it. So I'm so thanking you for making that statement, because again, I'm sure every myofunctional therapist listening is like smiling ear to ear right now. Um, so the chief complaints of this patient that came in, mainly her complaint was facial asymmetry. She didn't know what happened. She was looking at pictures of herself and she was like, I don't know what changed. Um, she's a mouth breather. She had difficulty swallowing. So her example, I think she told me was like, if she ate pancakes, she could not swallow. If it was something thick, she was not able to swallow it. She knew she had a low tongue rest posture. She had had some, um, tinnitus, difficulty sleeping through the night. Um, she would wake up multiple times. She had neck pain, headaches, phantom leg aches, and eye pressure. She was a 29 year old female. She went through two rounds of ortho at 14 years of age and 19 years of age. She had bicuspid extractions. Um, she sucked her index finger until she was 17 years old. She was constantly biting clothes and pen caps. She had sinus issues, chronically inflamed tonsils as a child that were never removed. Um, she was bottle fed, history of asthma, poor posture, and of course, underdeveloped jaw. So these are some before and after pictures. So we had started treatment um, in July of 2016, um, almost wrapped up around, I don't think this was the complete end, um, but we still got some really great results. I mean, her chief complaint was that facial asymmetry, and you can see how much better that got. Uh, and this was with Mayo alone, because again, when I first started, I didn't have the network that I have now. And it makes me, makes me sad that I didn't for this patient. And I'm sure we all feel that, right? But we don't really know what we don't know until we know it. And now I know that I wouldn't treat this patient unless I had that collaborative care. Um, you can see the, the muscle strength here when she's in her pal lingual palatal seal. some posture photos, still not the greatest, but definitely a big improvement. 
Um, she was very, very happy um, with these with these photos. She, I, I remember it, I was so excited. It was my first case ever. And to be able to put the before and after pictures together for the first time and really being able to see it. I mean, it's, it is pretty, I don't want to say magical what myofunctional therapy can do because some patients think that they only need myofunctional therapy. And we already know that that's not the answer. Yes, it's very, very important. But for her, if we were able to expand her and get her, um, you know, to the airway size that she needed, these pictures would have been even better. Um, we took her from a malam potty uh, four to about, I would say between a one and a two with that after malam potty picture. And even look at the, the nostril size here. Um, she was able to sleep through the night, um, she didn't have any more tinnitus going on. Um, she was able, you know, to swallow and chew and eat whatever she wanted to. We really, really built up those, the masseter function. She, I can't remember the type of gum that she got, but she had sent it to me. It wasn't even something I recommended. She found this gum and she asked me, cause I had her chew on those tube chews that we give. And she's like, I just don't like those in my mouth. Can I chew on this gum? I was like, absolutely. Um, it was a, a harder gum. Um, and she just, it was amazing the results that she had at the end. Um, we're going to move on to- Brittany, can I just interrupt one moment? Yeah. Because yeah. that, can you just go back to the mal and potty score? Yeah. So this to me, I just spoke to another myofunctional therapist, uh, uh, Cheryl Schaefer, a good fr colleague and friend. And she also shared that she has gone from mal and potty four to mal and potty one, with just myofunctional therapy. And I didn't even know that that was not only possible, but wow, how so non-invasive. Oh my gosh, absolutely. And you know, I, I don't wanna say that I wouldn't have treated this patient um, if I knew before, I would have, but I always, you know, I always let patients know for optimal results, we do wanna have that interdisciplinary care. Um, Obviously we were able to get her further with Mayo alone, but just imagine where we could have got her. But yeah, I mean, it, it, it was pretty impressive. She was so excited to be able to sleep through the night. Um, she would text me like every morning, I didn't wake up last night. <laughs> I was mm -hmm. just as excited as she was. Um, I want to throw in one thing too. I want to tell you that picture again, go back. The nostril change is very significant because it's, it's Mayo only. This is just you and your work. That's a mm -hmm. big difference in the nostril and the name of the game is nasal breathing. You had it number one and there, look at the difference in the, in the chamber that that air can enter now. Mm -hmm. That's a very nice job, very impressive. Thank you. Uh, let's see, next we have, um, I can't remember exactly how old he was, but this was only three weeks of myofunctional therapy. Um, he had a two digit sucking habit uh, we got the habit eliminated, obviously, within that that first three weeks. Um, and look how much dramatic change there was there. Um, again, parents so excited. I've had grandparents call me like, I can't believe you got my granddaughter to stop sucking their thumb. And it, it's amazing if we get that thumb out of the way, the finger, whatever is in there that's preventing, you know, uh, the teeth from properly erupting. Same thing with this set of twins. Um, and these, honestly, these patients, I love these patients dearly, not super compliant patients, um, but we were still able to get this change, which I was really, really happy about for them. Um, it took us a while to get that, that thumb habit gone. There were some other kind of um, psychological things going on, um, but I was super proud of them. And when they saw these pictures and the orthodontist saw the pictures, I mean, they were thrilled. This was just with Mayo as well. Wonderful. And then the last one I want to show you is just a posture photo. Um, so this was a 13 year old female. Um, she, this is my little dog. She only would take these pictures and give me permission to use them for educational purposes if I let her hold the dog in the pictures. So her arms aren't by her side, how we would like them to be. But I mean, you can still see the difference um, in these, these rolled sh shoulders and that forward head posture. Um, still some really great changes seen here. And that is all I have for to share with you guys. So let me. Well, that's amazing. I hope that just some people just understand how important myofunctional therapy is. And, you know, I hope 
that this does get included in academia in the future, especially for dental hygienists, because wow, you know, what a difference we can make beyond, you know, caries and, and you know, uh, perio, and it, it's just such a whole new world that we can really change lives. So uh, those cases are really remarkable. I know you have others as well. Um, just due to the short amount of time we have tonight, and I want to make sure we get to the questions. Um, Carice, let's dive into just the business side of, of adding myofunctional therapy into the practice. Can you talk a little bit about, um, you know, perhaps the new revenue stream for ex existing patients as well as new patients? Absolutely. So when it comes to really getting more out of your practice, you've got to add different revenue streams, right? And adding in Mayo and having it as a part of your practice is going to be number one, a huge practice differentiator. I mean, you can, let's take my lovely state of New Jersey. It is the most densely populated state and we've got more dentists per people than any other state in the right? But how many of them have Mayo in their office? Less than 1%. Significantly reduce the amount of people that, you know, would be able to have access to this care. So you would be taking a practice that almost by paper just looks like any other practice and you make it a significant difference because now you're treating much more than just the typical drill and fill or you know root canal carries so forth you're taking it to the next level and you are amplifying whole body wellness you can now advertise differently that's going to bring in more well, you could still treat some of that same stuff. You could still do carriage treatment. You could do fillings. You could do root canals. You could do crowns and tongue ties, myo appliances and so forth. So that's going to add more to your practice. And then you're talking about that same less than 1%. So when people are looking for a provider, because more people are Googling this than ever before, when I track these things, because I, you know, that's what you got to do as a business, right? You have to track what's going on with Google and searches and how people are finding you in your site. By far and large, there's been over a hundred percent of the searches have now been added as far as how many people are looking for myofunctional therapy, how many people are looking for different types of appliances that I would often refer to different providers for. So this is what you want to have pop up your name when people are Googling this stuff, more people are looking for it. You wanna be a part of these conversations. And with James Nestor's book, cause we referenced him really earlier. I think that it's been even double what it was before that people are searching for this stuff. So you want to be a part of that. You're going to bring in new patients and you're going to amplify what you've already got existing with your current population by just incorporating just this extra new income. Wonderful. And as far as the, um, the, the new patients looking for airway dentists and myofunctional therapists, have you seen, um, a trend with with younger mothers coming in and looking for this because I know it's all over the mommy blogs. Oh, it's everywhere. <laughs> it's everywhere. The pedo practices are super booming with it now, right? Because now, you know, you incorporate phrenectomies and babies and then you got a whole nother thing. But yes, everybody's looking for it. We got to remember that pediatric obstructive sleep apnea wasn't founded until, you know, 1976 with Christian Gimeno. So since then, that's on, on its own has been becoming more aware that snoring is not a normal thing, that sleep disordered breathing is something that you want to help eliminate for your child's overall health and wellness. I relate to that personally and something I didn't know as a parent. So once you discover this thing and you start looking for people who can help, you want to be a part of what these people are searching for and you want to be the answer for those people. I'm forever grateful to the pediatric dentist that helped my children, not the pediatrician, the pediatric <laughs> dentist that helped my children. Wonderful. And then for those airway dentists out there already who are already doing this and you don't have myofunctional therapy in your practice, it's really a win-win situation because it's just providing more access to care, right? Your patient's already comfortable in your office. Uh, you can really track. Maybe, Brittany, you could talk about that because I know you're saying it would be a dream if you worked in an office when you're in a hygienist that had all the components of airway dentistry yeah. as well. Yeah. I mean, absolutely. Being able to offer all of that care to patients in the same four walls 
it's literally a win-win for everybody. Um, you know, I know personally as a hygienist, we have this passion to not only, you know, learn, but also to just really help our patients and get to that root cause. And that is what myofunctional therapy is all about. So I've never spoke to a hygienist who ventured into myofunctional therapy that regretted it. And I just made a post about this. Um, I think it was last week that I made the decision five years ago. I had no idea what I was even getting myself into. And now here I am five years later. And it, it was the best career move I ever made in my entire life. The passion that you'll have for the field, you're a forever student. We're always, always, always learning. And you know the, the network of people that you'll get to meet and the colleagues and just the lives you're going to change. I mean, that's really it. Like being able to change this person's life outside of the operatory, you know, not just getting them leaving with a, a sparkly smile and fixing that decay, but impacting the entire body, right? We all know about the impacts of nasal breathing and how it affects literally every function. So being able to be part of that as a hygienist in school, when I graduate, I never knew that that was coming for me. So wonderful. We had a lot of questions on who can become a myofunctional therapist. Can you, can you touch on that? And let's talk a little bit about the certification of myofunctional therapy. Where do we stand on that as far as, um, it, I know there's no board of myofunctional therapy. Maybe you can talk about the politics a little bit too, because there's a lot of confusion out there. Um, yeah, Chris, you want to take this one? <laughs> okay, sure. <laughs> Okay. Um, just going into who can do it. First of all, I would say we want to limit that to registered dental hygienist. Um, there are some dentists who take the course. I don't know any dentists that do the myofunctional therapy themselves because there's so many other ways that you could be using clinical chair time much better than doing myofunctional therapy. I think that's best reserved for your registered dental hygienist, but their education in oral embryology and oral health and in oral anatomy and physiology function. I mean, the standardized license regimen that the dental hygienist has to go through in school pretty much is a great prerequisite. Not all dental assistants have that. They don't have that same schooling. They don't have that same, um, you know, standardization into how you get to where you are as a dental assistant. So I would say that we definitely limit it to registered dental hygienist and any dentist that is interested in learning can absolutely learn as well. Um, when it comes to certification, uh, why I guess Brittany wants me to speak about it is because I'm not certified. But certification actually isn't something that is required at all anywhere. Uh, you definitely want to be proficient because you want to be able to be a master of your craft and to really genuinely help people, not just kind of fumble over your steps and, you know, lead people in the wrong direction. So you definitely want to be proficient. You want to know what it is that you're doing. But certification is not a requirement. There is no governing board. There is no licensing body. There is nobody that really observes the field as a whole. So it is not a requirement. Okay. Well, um, let's get to the questions because we have quite a few and I feel like everyone will benefit from these questions. I'm going to start with the ones that were actually typed in and then we'll go to the chat on Zoom. So discussing how to demonstrate to skeptical parents of minors or adult patients, the importance of myofunctional therapy and not just silly exercises and a waste of time. How do you do, how do, you do that? How do you get them on board? It's all education. Again, um, so much of the first appointment that I have with my patients at their comprehensive evaluation, let's say it's a, a child is talking to that parent. Most often when they get referred to me, they expect me to just look at the way that their child swallows because they think they're coming to me for a tongue thrust. And when we start educating on them, why they have this tongue thrust, that the tongue thrust is actually a compensation of something going on with the airway or what, you know, whatever they're presenting with. And we start talking more about sleep patterns and breathing patterns and again, educating them on that. And it's funny, I always end up having a second conversation with the parent after they come in because you'll ask parents some questions about how their child sleeps and how they eat and how, you know, if they're saying they're watching TV or there is their mouth open or closed. And some parents, and some parents will be honest. They're like, I don't know. Like, I don't know. He's 14. I haven't gone in his bedroom since whatever age. And I'm like, 
I know. I'm like, but I need you to, for the next week, I need you to go into his room and I want you to literally video him. And I want you to, you can send it to me or you can tell me exactly what you saw. And a lot of these parents don't realize it. So I would say, educate them. That's the best thing. Just like we didn't know what we know now, these parents have no idea either because nobody's saying it to them. Nobody's making that connection unless you go to your pediatrician's office and say, my child snores really loud. My child sounds like Darth Vader when he sleeps. They're not going to ask you. That's not, and I don't have kids. I don't know if that's completely true, but I'm pretty sure that those are not standardized questions at the pediatrician's office. Okay. Well, that's great, great advice. Um, a lot of the next questions are going to be more the business side. Can you touch upon how to fit this into a busy dental hygiene practice? Do you do this half a day a week or is in the middle of a typical hygiene schedule? What is the best way to incorporate Mayo into the dental practice? Ooh, strategically and it's personalized. It's going to vary for each and every practice. And we do go over this um, in quite a bit of detail, I would say, during our course. So I would say if that's something you're definitely interested in learning more about, 100% the course will guide you on how you can really build, use that in your practice, specifically for whatever your goals are. So one of the follow, a follow-up question to that is, what does this OMT course offer that the others don't? So what sets this cor course apart? And I would say what you just said is a key aspect, right? How to implement it into the dental practice. Is that fair to say? A hundred percent. It's how to implement it because there are so many places where you can really just go to learn myofunctional therapy. You can take a course and learn myofunctional therapy in any number of places, but how to actually become a myofunctional therapist, how to actually integrate it into that there's nowhere else. This is it. <laughs> Okay. I like that. <laughs> From a business, <laughs> another business standpoint, two hygienists have been trained in OMT in an office. They've tried medical billing and three different companies, but it doesn't work. They charge cash. Is there any other way? There's a lot of questions on medical billing and it does insurance cover this and how do you bill for this? I know that will be covered too, but the high level answer. Uh, you want me to go, Chris? Yeah. Yeah. Um, a lot of insurances, aren't going to cover it, you're going to be out of network. Um, you can provide patients with super bills. Um, you have to obviously have an MPI number associated with that. Um, you can hope for the best and hope that they get reimbursement, reimbursement. Um, but you want to be upfront with them that a lot of us, we don't accept insurance. You know, for me, patient pays me, I give them the super bill and they send it to their insurance. I will say that more people are getting coverage than ever before. Um, you know, you can accept HSA accounts, you can accept FSA accounts. So there are other ways. Um, I don't know which codes you're using and getting rejected. Um, also something that we will go over in the core Superville production, that could be part of it. Maybe you're just using the wrong codes. Okay. If a hygienist in a dental practice gets certified in myofunctional therapy, um, are they able to charge two services in the same practice or do you have to have a separate roles legally? wearing two different hats, so to speak. Oh, that's a big stop sign. Like I, <laughs> I, I hold it up, like do not mm -hmm. combine the two. You are either wearing your hygiene hat or you take that off and you put on your Mayo hat, but you can't wear two hats at once. You look silly, don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> and then you'll go over that in the course, right? Absolutely. We have a whole okay. practice liabilities section. So I will say Carice has probably practiced myofunctional therapy in every which way is possible. So if anybody can coach on this, it is Carice Laguerre. <laughs> <laughs> okay. How does one best compensate the practitioner doing the myo in the practice? Also something that we go over, uh, there's so many different factors that go into that, um, you know, who's responsible for what, what are the roles, what it, or the timing is going to look like, uh, how many patients do you have, who's billing, how are we billing, there's so many different things mm -hmm. and we, we break it down in the course of that is a loaded question. Okay. Anyway, yeah. Um, will a mouth guard help if patient is not ready for therapy? Maybe Dr. Mariah, maybe you want to touch on that too. <laughs> Is it, will a mouth guard help? I don't know what they re mean by mouth guard, but maybe you can. Yeah, it depends what you mean by a mouth guard, but 
we tend to refer to them as guides. And so while we're using guidance appliances as part of the treatment process, it's not a replacement for the myofunctional therapy. And our goal is to get the child into the myofunctional therapy, but it's not bad if one starts before the other. And so if I have the child in the chair and we're working through the consultation process and the parents are agreeable, we could deliver a myofunctional guidance appliance and they could begin wearing that accordingly. Meanwhile, they're gonna be heading off to the myofunctional therapist as well. And then we, we really want all of the treatment being done. If, um, if the parent is ready and the, they make it to the myofunctional therapist and they begin and we're ordering an appliance and it won't be in for a month, you can begin the myofunctional therapy and we could receive a guidance appliance later. We can do myofunctional therapy and then get to an expander. Or if I had the expander ready and was in and then we got to the myofunctional therapy second, there's no bad timing to have myofunctional therapy. We know the kids need it. So as long as they get it, I don't mind when it happens. So there, I don't have hard rules over first, second, third, as long as you're doing all one, two, and three. If you get it all done, we're in great shape. Great. And then one more question for you, uh, Dr. Morales. What percentage of bruxism is due to incorrect positioning of the tongue? I know we just had Gerald Simmons on last week, but yeah, maybe we, you can we touch on that. We just had Dr. Yeah. Simmons on who was sharing with us that airway protective mechanism where you know the bruxism, the nighttime bruxism has a distinct relationship to airflow resistance and how well we're breathing. And then the protective mechanism of the body to move the jaw to let to help the air go by better. So my feeling and how I practice my philosophy is that the jaw movement, the bruxism that we call it, is really related to an airway problem. And in my world, it's under development. So Everybody that I see who bruxes, I consider having an airway problem related to underdevelopment. And then we work our way wider and forward, including the frenum inspection and analysis and treatment with the myofunctional therapy. All of it is together. And yeah, bruxism and airway are tied pretty closely. If we don't see kids in our practice, this is coming from a doctor, is it still worth using myofunctional therapy? You can all jump in on that. It's like, yes, right? A thousand percent. Okay. Um, can you still do myofunctional therapy if there's not enough space to hold tongue in suction for proper oral posture? Hmm. Yes. You're working on the interdisciplinary team though. You're a member of it. So it probably wouldn't be like, you know, just a hundred percent myo case. Um, there are very few of those, but it would be something that you would work with uh, your doctor on as they're doing appliance therapy and trying to widen. You're also helping. Okay. Can I say one thing? Um, sure. that, it, it actually has to do with the other question. But one of the things that I've heard Dr. Moralia say in, you know, listening to him lecture and stuff is that unhealthy children lead into unhealthy adults. So if you're a general practice that doesn't see any kids, you still have all those unhealthy adults that led from childhood that never were treated by a myofunctional therapist. So a thousand percent, you should have myofunctional therapy in your office. Let's switch, switch gears a little bit. When checking the mal and potty, what instructions do you give uh, for the patients to view? Tongue up, down, relaxed, patient sitting up or lying down. We struggle with consistent classifications. They're supposed to be sitting up in a neutral position in the chair, not, not laid back. You have them set up in a neutral position. You ask them to open, um, stick their tongue out. Do not say ah. They say ah, then we're going to see that lift. So that's definitely not going to be a, a valid reading. And Dr. Morali, do you want to touch on that too? Or is that? Yeah, that's what we do. Sitting mm -hmm. up, Brittany said, that's what we're doing. Yep, you got okay, it. Okay, excellent. I'm happy I'm yeah. doing it right. <laughs> <laughs> and then how can the oral myofunctional therapist relate to the doctor doing the frenum revision, the whys and the wheres and the hows of the revision needs to be done? I'm not sure I entirely understand that question. So bas basically, how what's the myofunctional therapist's role when relating to the to doctor doing the frenum revision? Why and how? Like, why are they sending them there? I can understand that frustration. Sometimes they may go to a, uh, someone, a neural surgeon, and they may say you don't need it, or or you know where where do you? Um, is there an easier way to relay to the doctor? Do you have the discussion beforehand? How do you guys work that interdisciplinary uh, workflow? 
Oh, 100% teamwork. I have this, let me see if I can do it really quick, but I have this really great example where you imagine like your arm has been tethered to your body and you've only been able to move it, but so much, right? And then somebody comes along and says, hey, that's not supposed to look like that. I can release it. And they just go ahead and release it. But your triceps and biceps have never actually lifted your arm like this. So you wouldn't be able to do it. Um, so what we do as the myofunctional therapist is we're working on those eight different muscles that are in pairs. So 16 different muscles that innervate the tongue. And we're working on getting those to be as strengthened as possible and teaching the patient exactly what they have to do. Cause active wound management is a huge part of what we are really working on after the release. Then once we get to a point where we feel like the function is looking like we're going to be able to sustain and get optimal healing, that's when we give the okay that Said, hey, you're doing a great job. I think you're good for the phrenectomy. I'm going to contact the dentist, let them know. And then, you know, from there release and we keep in touch. There's always collaboration when you're interdisciplinary. Right. And as a dental hygienist, how do we play a role in the dentists in educating the patient about airway obstruction to the patient? How do you educate the dentist? How do you play a role, um, I guess, in educating the patients? How do you help the, de the dentist in that process? Oh, boy. Um, I mean, simple things that you can do starting tomorrow when you see your patients. Take that Malin potty score. Start, re you know, connecting the dots between what you're finding on their medical history, what medications they're on, um, and the relation to airway and sleep apnea and other sleep disordered breathing looking at tongue size compared to oral cavity size, you know, that tongue needs to fit up in the roof of the mouth. It's not that your patient has a, a huge tongue. It's that most more than likely they are just underdeveloped and that tongue has nowhere to go. Um, like Dr. Liao's book, I always mess up the name six foot tiger. tiger. <laughs> there yeah. <we> go. yeah. <laughs> yes. And have some books. I mean, I think having books that maybe your patients can even borrow and bring back. There's so many great books out there right now. Yeah, Great. and let's not underestimate the role of the hygienist with the patient anyway. Like that's who you're really developing the relationship with in the office. You're already a valuable member in educating that patient. And so you're just backing up the doctor. You're finding these same things that Brittany was talking about and you're talking to the patient about it. Just like when they turn to you and they're like, do I really need that root canal? You're, you're answering them for that. You're answering the same way about airway. How young are your typical patients? It depends on what you specialize in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I've seen patients. Of so let's get it an age range. When, what's the youngest patient you've seen and what's the oldest patient you've seen? Um, so that all, so for me personally, my oldest patient was 74 years old and I've done active wound management, um, on an infant. So that's a pretty huge change age range, but that's active wound management. That's it. That's not, you know, not a myofunctional therapy program at all. So if we're talking myofunctional therapy, like a full program, mm -hmm. I would say like the beginning age, I would enroll somebody is five and a full blown program, you know, maybe four, depending on maturity level, parent participation, it really depends. Um, anything besides that, I don't, you're, I don't, I wouldn't be able to work and put somebody through a full mile program. Is that to say you can't give them things to work on? Of course. But if you're talking about a full mile functional therapy program, um, I would say for me, five years old. And how about you, Carice? Same. Yeah. I mean, I've done a lot of working with, you know, active wound management on infants and babies. And we touch on that a little bit, um, in the course, but for a full program, we're talking about around age five. And, you know, we've, I've seen a lot of older people. I think the oldest I've ever seen hasn't been in their 70s. I think she was 62. But outside of that, you know, we can go to any age. Right. Yeah. I'm getting a lot of questions on how much you charge per session. Can you give some kind of, I know you're going to go into this in the course, but some kind of range or overview of something that's standard and typical. Is there such a thing? depends where you live. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like numbers out in California per session are way higher than what I charge in Connecticut. <laughs> um, so it, it does, it varies by region. So by zip code, probably, right? You can, 
Okay, so that'll be covered in the course. And then um, is there anything else that maybe you want to add that hasn't been asked that you think would kind of tie up any loose ends or mysteries to myofunctional therapy? And then we'll go into kind of reviewing the course a little bit more. Um, there's so How much I can talk about. <laughs> I know. <laughs> we have a, like a whole several, like, you know, hours worth of stuff that we could be talking about. Um, I think it's a fantastic field. I think it's the most lateral move as far as dental hygienists using everything that they've been taught in school and everything that they're currently doing because you're doing these intraoral and extraoral evaluations and examinations anyway for oral cancer screenings. I think this is the most lateral way to then take that same bit of knowledge and same thing that you're doing, but applying it differently. So that's the only thing I would add. Great. Dr. Morelli, anything you want to add that you think there may be confusion just on a high level that we didn't touch upon? Maybe the difference between exercises and, and therapy? Yeah. You know, when there was a time where I didn't even know what this is. You know, I graduated from dental school in 1993. I didn't know it existed. So four years in dental school, never heard of it. As the years go by and you start picking up some expansive ortho courses, one thing leads to the next. Next thing you know, you learn oral facial myofunctional therapy. And I know I mispronounced it the first time I heard it. So here I am learning that this even exists. And then to learn, like Brittany shared, it's got a hundred and something year history. Uh, and I, you know, I just was one of those things. I can't believe I didn't learn about this sooner. The most fascinating thing going though is the trend now, because now the awareness is growing and very rapid uh, growth. So this is gonna become more common, a part of treatment in early childhood through adult. But the idea is the earlier we can get involved, the better. Uh, the more people that take an interest and then get some training to do is gonna help out a lot. Getting back to where I was like 15 years ago, I was having the kids do some exercises. And so I used to say it you know, this way that I'm playing checkers while the orofacial myofunctional therapist is playing chess. So I knew a few little exercises 15 years ago. I, I know more now, but I still refer to every chance I get because this is, it is a specialty. They are experts. They should be handling the children and I can't do it as well. And so I like to refer it. I like to send it, you know, there's, it's a tremendous opportunity and I'm really hoping that we're going to help drive awareness so that other people get involved because there is an almost unlimited number of children that need attention and we don't have enough of the myofunctional therapists right now. So that number needs to grow substantially. And then we need the kids and you know maybe it is through the moms and education that we get them to the myofunctional therapists as well so that these kids could get attention early because so many of the symptoms and the unhealthy that we see in kids is related to the underdevelopment and really the ultimate cause is gonna be the soft tissue dysfunction. And so treating the cause is the priority. Um, I thank everybody who's joined on. I see a nice healthy number of people watching this tonight. And then if everybody tells two friends and they tell two friends and they tell two friends, um, we, we need to have more myofunctional therapists and then we need to have more awareness to get them treating all the children and adults that, that we possibly can. Great. So let's head off. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen um, to kind of go over some updates. I know I thought there were a couple of questions about how to have these discussions about airway, especially in the pediatric component. So I did want to share um, from Steve Carstensen, Dr. Steve Carstensen's uh, visit with us. He did have a code for 15% savings for this new ADA brochure on children's airway. So I thought that would be a nice resource for everyone out there to perhaps get the conversation started. So copy down this code so you can at the checkout at the ADA catalog, get a 15% discount on this brochure. We have um, upcoming many residencies, and this is where if you want to become an airway dentist and focus on implementing myofunctional and expansion appliances, clear aligner, um, the evaluation, diagnostics, and the treatment, we do this in a two-day mini residency. And uh, it's Friday, God willing with the weather, right, Dr. Moralia, we will be up and running, but we do have two spots open for the adult course if anyone's interested. And then our courses in green are the same dates that we're offering simultaneously the um, oral facial myofunctional course for the RDH. So let's take a look about that in just a moment. 
But let's look what we've done so far as far as Airway Health Solutions Airway Dentists, because these green dots represent the doctors, the doctors we've trained over this past year, and really what thrills Dr. Moralia and I, and I know Carice and um, Brittany, is that they're treating hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of patients. So this really is spreading and the need for myofunctional therapy is spreading as well. So what we offer in our course, which we think is a differentiator, is that we help you implement this into the dental practice. But you will be able, after this course, in the two day course, you need to take both days, is you're gonna become an oral facial myofunctional therapist. You're gonna implement what Dr. Moralia teaches and it's gonna correspond and correlate and complement the teaching. So it's great if the doctor and hygienist take it at the same time. Um, Carice or Brittany, you wanna to touch a little bit upon the uh, social media and the marketing presence that you review in your course as well? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think that that is a integral part um, of being able to grow the practice, not only internally, you know, with your existing patients, but also, you know, to get new patients into the practice. And that's something that, I mean, sure, you can go and take like a marketing class elsewhere, but we're talking about marketing specifically for airway and myofunctional therapy and how to, like Carice said, track you know, what somebody searching on Google that came to your website, how well your website's doing. So you can really drive people in. Um, it's, it's, it's constantly changing and there's so much information that we have to present with you. We actually have um, somebody that actually does social media and marketing. I, I call her my little guru that I get to always ask questions to. Um, she, the wealth of knowledge that she's going to give to everybody is, is amazing. Um, alongside again, getting all of the myofunctional therapy concepts and components and evaluations to be able to know how to really market and have a strategy to start that next day with the doctor to really build your practice. That's huge. Because like Curry said, you can go and learn myofunctional therapy, but to really be able to build a myofunctional therapy practice within your dental office is a different story. Great. And let's talk about the ongoing support, the community and mentorship that you offer, as well as the Myo, the Myo starter kit. Curry, you want to touch on that a little bit? Absolutely. So we know that, you know, in this two day course, we're going to be hitting a lot of different things and there's so much information and it's going to be overwhelming. And so you're going to need a place where you can ask questions, where you can get us to really give you a lot of support. We plan on having a open forum on Facebook where we will be in there and we'll definitely pop in and do, you know, Q and A's every now and then and be able to provide that continuing support, a nice community where everybody who's taken the course can be able to connect with each other and to help each other along as well. And then our mentorship as well when, when we're in there and we're able to provide you with answers to your questions based on our experiences. So it's ongoing support. Absolutely. Wonderful. Okay. Well, let's talk a little bit about if you want to visit um, more information on the course, you can go to airwayhealthsolutions.com forward slash Mayo. Uh, our dates are March 19th and the 26th. And again, they correlate with our mini residency and then June 11th and 18th. Uh, it's 1998 per day and you get 18 live CEs. And now I'm going to, I'm going to feel like a salesperson now, but today you get a special offer. <laughs> I, <laughs> it's so not in my uh, repertoire, but we did want to give an introductory offer to just really, uh, to build the course and to get the word out there on how talented these ladies are and how important this is to your patients and to your practice. So if you email info at airwayhealthsolutions.com, the code AHSMIO, you're gonna get an $800 courtesy. Um, that's both days. So it's $800 off the course for one attendee. If you have two hygienists in the office that want to attend, they each get a thousand dollar courtesy for the both days. Um, this is gonna expire February 25th. So please, if you're, if you're serious about joining us, now is the time because we really don't discount our courses. Uh, this is just an introductory special and we really wanted to just get everyone kind of that jump start that perhaps they need to get rolling. So we do hope you join us and it will change your patients and your practice lives. And it's a win-win, right? We talk about that all the time. It's a win-win for the hygienist, for the doctor, for the practice, for the patients, um, and even your community. 
there is really a lack of access to care. So we really feel like we cover all the grounds. Um, anything you guys want to add to, about the specifics of the course? So we pretty much covered that. Yeah, Good. I think you. Yeah, I think you covered it in great detail. Okay, terrific. Um, we also have, we're very busy at Airway Health Solutions. We we're launched another new course, and this is all from the feedback I am getting of what you guys want. And a lot of people really enjoyed the case reviews from Clear Aligners with Dr. Moralia, where you literally just go over the software um, setup and for our course on March 25th, we are we actually have five slots um, taken already. We just launched it yesterday, so we have 10 left, but it's 10 minutes, one-on-one -on -one interaction. We review each case, and you will learn a lot just by watching. If you don't have a case, you can also join as an auditor. So what you'll get is if you're doing clear aligners, you'll see if your current setup is on track for success and predictability. You're going to ensure that the case is in the expansive camp, that there's no no hidden retractive techniques. And the best thing about it is Dr. Moralia makes clear line of therapy easy because you're going to do no or minimal IPR and, and very little attachment. So it's really user friendly. So hopefully you can join us um, either as a submitter or an auditor, but please visit our website, airwayhealthsolutions.com forward slash aligners, or you can just go to our main website and look at the menu. And then we're also going to have coming soon a clear line of therapy course for the TMD patient. So that'll be a full day course as well. So I just wanted to share that with you. Um, we do have different um, social media resources for you. Please follow us on Facebook, Instagram. I do have a blog. I'm going through my own expansion case. In fact, I look so narrow in that picture down there because that was about five months ago. So I think I got about five millimeters. I'm going to have a new blog on Friday. My myofunctional therapist is Brittany, who does it with me, telehealth. And then Dr. Scott Siegel evaluated me for a tongue tie. And I do have the posterior tongue tie. So I'll, I am working with Brittany before before and after the tongue tie revision. So follow me on that. We have exciting conversations coming up um, next week. We're going to talk about interceptive orthodontics with Dr. Moralia, early childhood. We have a lot of questions just focused on this group. In fact, we had a lot of questions tonight pertaining to this topic. So I held them until next week. So we encourage you to join us. Dr. Scott Siegel is going to return, talk all about infants, pediatrics, uh, tethered oral tissues. Kevin Ollendorf from Ollendorf Appliance Lab is going to have a great segment on user-friendly tips and tricks for the expansion appliances. So he has a wealth of knowledge. So many people ask me something. I say, ask Kevin. He knows. He knows all the tips and tricks. And then in Q2, we're going to have Doc Dr. Michael Delb is joining us on acute TMD. Dr. Lauren Ballinger, she has only a pediatric airway practice. And the infamous Dr. John Yu will be joining us as well. Actually, that will be April 30th at noon because he's in England. So um, you might want to mark that on your calendar. Okay. So I think to close out, you know, we all know this quote, or if you don't know, it's such a great quote, but it's such a, an important quote because you can really change not one life, but hundreds and thousands of lives. And imagine that feeling. I mean, that's like success over the moon. So uh, any questions, please reach out to info at airwayhealthsolutions.com. I'm going to stop sharing my screen. And uh, let me see if there are any other questions um, that we could Andrew, just maybe one more question in the two minutes that we have. Is there a valuable role that a myofunctional therapist can play in a predominantly adult patient population? I think we covered that, but yes, there is, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I, we definitely covered that for sure. Okay. All right. Well, this was wonderful. There is so much we could talk about this for 18 hours. That's why we built the course. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so I know there were a lot of questions, but unfortunately, there's no short answers. You know, you really need to educate, learn, but the time and money that you're going to invest in yourself is going to come um, back to you rather quickly. And you're really going to enjoy uh, going to work and helping all these patients. So thank you, Brittany. Thank you, Carice. Thank you, Dr. Moralia. Thank you everyone for listening and taking the time to educate yourselves and learn more. And hopefully we'll see you soon at Airway Health Solutions. Good night, everybody. Good night. Bye. Good night, everybody. Thank you very much. That was excellent. Thank you.